All right, so this is um, another day here. We got Tuesday, April 3rd. Uh, today we picked up three things. Uh, one thing was a dilutions worksheet. The second thing was the lab, which we are doing tomorrow. It is the How Sweet It Is lab. And the third thing was the review. We're looking to have a, having a, uh, a test on Thursday this week. Uh, it's the uh, Friday is Good Friday, so we won't be in school. Uh, that means that tomorrow being Wednesday, what we want to do is we want to do that lab and we want to ask questions um, uh, about the review if we've got any. Uh, the review question, the answers, uh, and all my work will be on my blog. So you can check there if you need to. Uh, let's get straight into this. Uh, those were the answers to last night's homework. I'll leave that up for a moment. Press pause if you need to. All right, the moment is gone. Uh, we'll talk about diluting solutions now. Uh, so the topic for today is, is dilutions. The solution is dilutions. That makes things a little bit less concentrated. All right. Uh, the reason why we have to do dilution problems in addition to molarity problems. Well, let me get my pen again here. Okay. Molarity problems allow us to make up certain concentrations of solutions uh, by taking a certain number of moles of a substance and uh, dissolving them in a certain number of liters of water. Uh, now, this isn't very hard to do for a solid because you can calculate number of moles by just using the molar mass. Uh, that gives you a molarity of a solution. However, the problem is this. It's not the only way to make a, um, to make a solution, a molarity solution, uh, because not all things come in solids. Sometimes you have things that come in liquids. Often acids come in liquids. Uh, in real life application, um, it's a lot cheaper. Well, here, let me show you the uh, quick picture here. Uh, it turns out that uh, when we in chemistry want to do a lab using acids, I wind up having to take out a concentrated hydrochloric acid, 12 molar hydrochloric acid, uh, and I have to wind up diluting it down. Sometimes we need one molar, sometimes we need two molar, uh, but we always get this concentrated acid sent to us, uh, basically because it's cheaper to send this. If I knew that all I needed was one molar hydrochloric acid, sure, I could order it. Um, but if you think about it this way, if I needed 12 moles of one molar hydrochloric acid, I would need to have the same jug, one liter jug, only it's one molar, hydrochloric. The same amount of acid would be in 12 bottles. That's only in one bottle here. Uh, now, the beverage industry knows this in real life, uh, real life chemistry. Uh, the beverage industry knows this. Uh, when you go to a restaurant and you get something from the soda bar, from the soda fountain, uh, what they've got is they've got a big bag of syrup, concentrated syrup, uh, and they add the water from the tap. Uh, and they add carbonation to it uh, as, you're, uh, as you're getting your fountain drink. Uh, so the same sort of idea uh, is going on in chemistry. It's a lot cheaper to send this stuff than it is to send 12 bottles of uh, the less concentrated stuff, simply because of the weight. Okay? So often acids and other chemicals come in a concentrated form, and they need to be diluted by adding water. That's a pretty simple idea. Um, the moles of the acid before are going to be equal to the moles of the acid after. It's just that you're diluting it. You're adding more water. Okay. Uh, so we always decrease molarity. We have a relationship here. Uh, this is the important mathematical idea. Um, the molarity of the solution before times the volume of the solution before is going to be equal to the molarity of the solution after times the volume of the solution after. So, for instance, if I was going to take this, so this uh, stuff here and I'm going to try and make up a one molar dilution of it, uh, I could take the 12 molar substance that I have one liter of, one bottle that's one liter here, uh, and I want to make a one molar solution. The question is, how much volume am I going to get? Well, 12 times 1 is 12. What times 1 gives me 12? Yeah, that's right. I need 12. I will we'll wind up with 12 liters of solution, just like I indicated over here. All right. um, what that means is we can now solve a problem like this. 
Sulfuric acid doesn't come in concentrations of 12 molar because uh, different acids can actually come in different molarities. Sulfuric acid can come in molarities all the way up to 18. Uh, so how much concentrated 18 molar sulfuric acid is needed to prepare 250 milliliters of a 6 molar solution? If this looks a little daunting, it isn't. It's a dilution problem. So we use the dilution equation, M1V1 equals M2V2. Now this stuff is the after effect. What we actually want to try and get is on this side of the equation. So if I'm trying to get a 6 molar solution, and I'm trying to get 250 milliliters of it, uh, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to start out with an 18 molar. This is the start before. And then start with an 18 molar solution. And I don't know how much I want to use. All right, so basically what the math comes out to be, it comes out to be 18 times V is equal to 6 times 250. All right, just a little note here. If I put milliliters over here, this volume is going to come out to be milliliters. If instead I use liters here, then this is going to come out to be liters. Okay, uh, so 18 times V, I combine my like terms on the right side, 6 times 250. Uh, let's see, that is 1,500. Uh, I have to divide both sides by 18 if I'm following my algebra rules. So the volume winds up being uh, somewhere around 83.3, and the units on this are going to be milliliters. So I need 83.3 milliliters. So if I was actually trying to make up six mol uh, six molar solution that was 250 milliliters, what I would do is I would start out by uh, getting my jug of 18 molar H2SO4. Okay, I would get out a graduated cylinder and I would measure out 83.3 milliliters of this 18 molar solution. So I would have now 83.3 milliliters filled into this graduated cylinder. I then get out an object called a volumetric flask. They're fairly expensive because they're exact, they're very exact about um, how much volume they can contain. This particular one is labeled 250 milliliters. The reason is, heck, I need 250 milliliters of solution. These come in various sizes, one liter, 500 mils, 250 mils. Uh, they come down to 10 mils and 25 mils and 50 mils, but you get the idea. They come in certain sizes. What they have is they have an etched mark on the top neck here. And if I fill this all the way up to here, I'm going to have exactly 250 milliliters of solution. So what we do here is this. We don't, we don't have anything in it yet. We put in uh, our 83 milliliters of H2SO4. So it's all going to be down there. Now that's a clear liquid. It doesn't look any different from water, but gosh, you don't want to smell it. It smells like battery acid probably because it is battery acid. But then the next thing that you do is you add in water. Okay, so you add water and you swirl this around to mix it up just like you would when you're mixing Kool-Aid. You want it to be, get mixed up nicely. All right, so you'll add some more water and you'll mix it up again. And uh, then finally, oops, sorry, let's get rid of that. Uh, finally, what you're going to do is you're going to fill it all the way up to exactly that line. If you fill it to exactly that, that line, then you know you've got exactly 250 milliliters of a 6 molar solution. All right. Now, what happens if you go beyond? If you go beyond and you've got a little bit of a heavy hand and you overfill it, oops, now you've added more than 250 milliliters. So let's say, I don't know, 266 milliliters. What happens to this? Well, there's extra uh, substance in here. So this, there's not extra substance, there's extra water in here. So you've diluted even more. So now you've got like 5.9 molar solution or something less than 6.0. Um, so you really have to be very careful when you're doing a volumetric, um, a volumetric measurement here, a dilution. That's just the confirmation that we're all right. Okay, now we take a look at this. Uh, this is a simple question from the test, uh, just a kind of a preview question. Uh, which of these is more concentrated? It's more concentrated. 
Solution B looks more concentrated. Sometimes you can tell just by looking. Other times you've actually, oops, other times you've actually got to think about it. Uh, a concentration can be measured as the number of moles per liter, right? So if I call this a mole, and that a mole, and that a mole, this has three moles in one liter solution, so it's a three molar solution. Uh, on the other hand, this one has one, two, three, four, five, that's five moles in one liter, so that is a two point, oops, sorry, not two point five, that is a five, five over one is five, that's a five molar solution. So which one's more concentrated? Well, it's the one with the bigger number. Uh, so that's a, the five molar solution is uh, the uh, more concentrated. Now that's an interesting question, right? Let's change. Oops, here we go. Five. Let's change the circumstances just a little bit. Change this to red. So let's change the volume to 2.0 liters and see what happens. Well, this volume is still 1.0 liters, so it's still three over one is three. So this concentration doesn't change. It's still three molar. Okay. But over here. This beaker is not drawn to the same scale. This is a two liter beaker, it's holding two liters. So what we've got here is we've got five moles of solute in two liters of solution. So we've got a two and a half, sorry, it's not quite writing. There it is, two and a half liter, uh, I'm sorry, two and a half molar solution. Uh, that means which one is the higher uh, concentration? Now it's the three molar. Okay, so two different answers based on slightly different uh, calculations. Uh, if you've got one liter, uh, if they're both one liter, then this one is the higher, otherwise that one. 